Hey, this is Raymond, and I want to try something a little bit different with this video. So I had a comment from Bradick that he was interested to see how I'd fit out the regular assault destroyers. So today I want to take a look at the Korax assault. Opening up the fit window here. Um, now the first question that people will ask you is, why would you fly a Korax over a Talwar? Uh, a Talwar is able to do everything a Korax can do, but better. The main reason you'd want to fit a, or fly a Korax over a Talwar is uh, it has stronger shields and it's able to apply its damage a lot better to small fast moving targets. Uh, those targets mainly being frigates and drones. So with that in mind, um, drones try to orbit you at approximately three kilometers and uh, you want to set yourself up in a position where you're able to be on top of any frigate that tries to take you on. Uh, so we're going to be going with a brawler fit on this one. Uh, in the high slots, we're going to be fitting small torpedo launchers. And uh, keeping in mind that we're a brawler fit, you'll see that the missile range is about eight and a half kilometers. So we really need to stay on top of that target. Uh, to help us do that, we're going to be fitting a warp scrambler and two web of fires. Uh, if a frigate gets hit by all three of those and you have an afterburner in the low slots, you're pretty much going to be able to stay at zero kilometers on top of that, uh, going as fast, if not faster, than the frigate, as long as it doesn't have an afterburner itself. Moving into the low slots then, uh, we're going to lean into the Assault Destroyer bonus and fit a DCU in there. Uh, we fit an afterburner over a micro warp drive. Uh, if we're going to be brawling, there's a very good chance a micro warp drive would be shut off by an opponent's scrambler. So we go with the afterburner on this one. With the final low slot, uh, I've chose to go with a medium shield extender. Now looking at the ship, you see that it's has a sizable power grid, but all the modules that you want to fit on this are not uh, power grid hungry. So this gives you a very good chance to oversize a module on this one. And the one that really makes sense here is going to be that medium shield extender. Uh, this gives you an insane EHP on this ship. Uh, this is comparable with the lower end of cruisers. So going into the rig slots then, we're going to plug the one hole in the shield the, and put an EM screen in there. And the other two mechanical rig slots, we're going to fit the standard warhead calefaction catalyst and the bay loading accelerator. Uh, moving into the engineering side, uh, activating a medium shield extender on a Corax really uh, takes a lot of capacitor. So. We're going to boost our capacitor up and fit a semiconductor memory cell in here. Now the second engineering rig, uh, we're going to go with an auxiliary thruster. Uh, this is to make sure that if any frigates try to disengage from us, we're able to try to stay on top of them as much as possible. Uh, for the final engineering slot, I went with another auxiliary thruster just to help me keep on my target a little bit better. Uh, that being said, my engineering skills are maxed out on destroyers and I'm able to afford this where if you're just trying to get into flying destroyers, you're not going to have this same luxury. So for the third one, I'd recommend a ancillary power grid router to boost up your power grid to make sure you can fit in a medium shield extender or going with a second semiconductor memory so just to boost your capacitor size that little bit farther up to make sure when you activate that medium shield extender uh, you still have capacitor left over for your other modules to continue running moving on to the nano cores uh, we currently have two options in the game the first one being the breeze core 2 uh, the reason that i would not go with this one is it offers you a 
bonus of um, increasing the damage type on a single or increasing the damage on a single damage type out of the four and with missiles being able to apply um, all four damage types boosting just one of them doesn't give you that great of a return as we go back to the fittings window here you'll see that our damage went up from 333 to 346 for about a 13 point increase so let's take that off and look at the other one that is available to us if I can find the correct screen here there it was of course I click out of it okay so we disassemble that and we move over to the monsoon core 2 now go ahead and fit that one on details and you'll see that it gives you a 14 and a half percentage increase to all damage types um, increasing you up to 359 so 26 points of dps better than without any nano core 13 uh, over the breeze core uh, increasing every uh, damage type on the ship um, that's the way i would go with this uh, it's a little bit more expensive uh, if you're trying to keep this as cheap as possible the breeze core will get the job done but uh, the monsoon two core is really what you're looking for on this one uh, next i'm going to show a small pvp footage of really the perfect target to showcase a core axon um was in a low sec and a succubus uh, decided he wanted to engage me sitting in a mining belt looking for frigates to attack me so hope you enjoy this video i look forward to your comments and let me know if you have any different ideas on how you would fit a Corax.